I feel like anytime you do a radio show, podcast, video cast, or whatever, today, March 13th, it was recording it, we have to start by saying, Happy New Year, everybody, right? Isn't that the way yeah. it's got to go? Because it's NFL New Year, Matt? Exactly, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's just... It's, I started sports at six o'clock saying happy new year. And a couple of people looked at me funny and I know ah. the joke is old. And I know the joke is that everybody makes it. I explained why that it's not the actual new year. It's the league new year, but now things are official. I will say though, that this day has become significantly less interesting because of the negotiation period earlier in the week. The, yes. the start of free agency is not what it once was. I mean, the start of free agency really was Monday, right? If you want to look at it that way, that's what it was Monday at 12 noon. And then of course they could start doing things on, you know, officially on Friday, but I, I see both sides and both ways. Like when they didn't have a negotiating period, guys were signing deals one minute in a free agency. You're like, dude, you've been negotiating this whole time. Excuse yeah. Me, which is why they, which is why they did something like this. So I, I totally understand that, but you're right. I mean, we already kind of knew a lot of the big stuff that was happening. There was some big stuff that happened today at the start of the new league year. Um, not necessarily with the bills, but some bills related items. And they are on the board with a couple of players. It's always game day in Buffalo. Welcome in Sal Capaccio, Matt Bove. Follow us on social media. You got us right down there. If you're watching on the YouTube Sal sports, YouTube page and the video stream at Sal sports and at Matt underscore Bove or wherever you pod. Thank you. All right. So where do you want to start with, um, what news? You got Tredavious White's official release. The Bills tweeting out mm -hmm. a you know video. You got Jordan Poyer and Saran Neal going down to the Miami Dolphins. Dane Jackson go to the Panthers. The Bills signing Mac Hollins. And then what is up with Eric Armstead? Where do you want to start, buddy? Well, what I want to start with was on the way home. So I was just finishing doing the news, and I was talking to my wife, and we were just talking about the day, and she said what do you got going on tonight? I was like, okay, well, we got to record with Sal when we get home. And she said, are there any players left on the bills? <laughs> and that is from a fan perspective of somebody who follows the team, but very casually follows the team because for the last several days and even dating back to last week, she has seen all of these names that are familiar with casual fans like herself leave Mitch Morse, Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, maybe potentially Micah, Hy Gabe Davis, all these guys mm -hmm. are now gone. So I guess my starting point here is a week into this or a couple days into this, how do we feel like it's gone? How do we feel like it's shaped out? They're a little quieter than I thought they would be at this point. Not completely. Like It's not like they've done nothing, but I thought maybe by now we would have more. I agree with you. I thought you'd have a little bit more. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, scorecard here. I had a, I put together my little, some spread sheets that I like to do with color coded. I just have to do that for my own brain to organize things. And if you take a look at the side where I have released or signed elsewhere, you start with the released people. And then you also have some that have signed elsewhere. Um, in the last couple of days, Poyer, Morse, Neil, Tredavious White, Naeem Hines. Then you have Leonard Floyd, Gabe Davis, Deontay Hardy, and Dane Jackson now, uh, is the latest one. Then you go to the side where they, I say signed from elsewhere. You had two early on, Trubisky and Hack, Hawk. Excuse me. They did not. Um, they did not uh, hit pending free agency. They were street free agents, but only two: Nicholas Morrow and Mac Hollins. And honestly, these are depth pieces, rotational pieces, special mm -hmm. teams players. One on offense, one on defense. So I agree with you. Now, I was not anticipating some sort of huge splash and big name from Brandon Bean. You never know. But I think by volume, you're right. I was expecting maybe a little bit more by now. And I guess, is that a disappointment? Is that a bad thing? Or are we just kind of waiting on it? I, I don't really know how to feel about it. If Daquan Jones is the biggest move they make until the draft, I feel like that's a disappointment. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's also maybe just the reality of the situation that they're in. I still think that they will do something notable. Now, something notable does not mean trading for T Higgins or going out and spending a ton of money on a position that completely shocks us. But we'll talk about it a little bit later. An Eric Armstead move would qualify in that regard. One of the better safeties left on the market, I feel like would quantify what I'm talking about as something bigger, but I still think there's got, I know there will be more coming just from a roster standpoint. They need to get to 90. There are going yeah. to be a lot of guys that they sign. It will absolutely happen. I just don't know if it's going to be all of this level now. Is it going to be all Nicholas Moros and Matt Collins? Or will there be a couple other guys thrown in there 
that we actually think could make an immediate day one impact for this team. And we don't know the exact salary cap space they have. I mean, there's estimations we can have because they restructured Dawson Knox, which by the way, do we know if Dawson Knox took a pay cut or if that was a just straight moving money around? Because I don't know how much of a pay cut he could take. He was only scheduled to make like 4.9 base salary. Um, mm -hmm. So there's not much there you can shed off and you can, but even then, if you just move some money around, I don't know how much money you can really kind of, you know, flip as far as and push money down the road on a, you know, contract restructure. So you have that one. Von Miller obviously had his restructure, but um, even with the Daquan Jones extension, AJ Epinesa extension, Dawson Knox restructure and Deion Dawkins, which we haven't talked about yet. I, oh, I'm yeah. not sure exactly where they are. I'm not sure exactly where, how much I, I could guess maybe like $10 million because I would think after they did Josh, they got to about 15 and then, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to eat up a little bit with those situations, but I, I don't really know where they are right now to have a guess of how much they can spend. Yeah, I would think they're probably somewhere in that 10 to 15 range, yep. but I also think that they have a very realistic potential of extending Taron Johnson and then giving themselves a little bit more if they think that they've got a guy that they like, let's say just for the sake of the conversation, they love Eric Armstead and that's going to be a $10 million deal. I'm just making up these numbers at some point, but you also want to go get a safety and you think that you need 15 for the guys that are actually going to fit into your top 51. Maybe then they have to go do something with Taron Johnson, or there's somebody else out there who they could restructure or rework their deal to try and get something done. I think that there will be a couple other deals that are made within the next couple of days. There's probably, there could even be one, done while we're recording this podcast being after dark. I mean, what time did the Daquan Jones deal get done midnight or something like that? Somewhere so, overnight. Yeah. I, I woke up yeah, to it. <laughs> I, I woke up to it as well. The baby woke up. I woke up to check on the baby and then looked at my phone and saw that they signed Daquan like, Jones. And I was oh, like, Oh, Daquan okay. Yeah. Look at that. So yeah, I just, I'm disapp disappointed. Isn't the right word, but I guess impatient. I'm a little <laughs> impatient that it is taken three days into this and they still haven't made what I would say is a big move or here. This is the way I'll put it. Their team is not better than it was a week ago. It's not even, I think close. And I thought they had the potential to rework some things and they still haven't done that. It's a great way to put it. One thing they did do was extend Deion Dawkins. What did you think about how he kind of played with everybody on social media? Well, Peel back the curtain for everybody. I called you. We talked about this. I heard yeah. you saying this on the radio as well. So I saw the post. I called you and I called one other colleague. I never thought we, we talked about this. We had this conversation, not on the podcast, but just on the phone. It didn't make any sense for them to cut Deion Dawkins. So the minute that those posts started, we both kind of thought either one, he's messing around or two. The other thing was, well, maybe they traded him. Because it wouldn't make sense to just get rid of him for nothing because he's too good of a player and he's still in the prime of his career. And then five minutes later, we learned what happened. It's very typical Deion Dawkins. We probably should have expected it, but I will say like a lot of people jumped on it. I'm happy that we didn't. I'm happy that it wasn't like the Bills are cutting Deion Dawkins and that was reported or anything like that just because – Sometimes it's better to take a little bit of time and try and figure out what's going on, even though we found out just a couple of minutes later. And then Dion had his Zoom call with the media after it all happened. And that was pretty interesting, too. He's, um, you know, he's an honest guy. He's a straight shooter and, and he just loves Buffalo. He has a lot of passion for Buffalo and he wanted to stay here and, you know, made it clear and that wound up happening. And credit to him for the season he had that the team was comfortable doing that as well. And Dion's only 29. He's going to be 30 next month. You know, he seems like an older soul, you know what I mean? When uh -huh. you, and, and he's been around for a little while. Also, I asked him, Matt, about that, those comments he made about the New York Jets and being shirtless and, you know, uh, on on Vlad TV and about the Jets. And he, I asked him, do you have any regrets? He said, of course not. Why would I have regrets? And then he goes on Kay Adams. <laughs> she asked him about T. Higgins. He says, as long as it's not anybody in the Jets, I'm cool with signing him. Like, he really doesn't like the Jets, man. Yeah, it seems like it. It seems like all of the rivalries in the division <laughs> have somehow become spicier and they haven't even played, I know. obviously, since the season has ended because you've got Deion Dawkins saying everything that he said about the New York Jets. You have Jordan Poyer and Saran Neal, now both yeah. in Miami. I guess the Patriots, nothing has really changed, but that rivalry will always exist, at least for the yeah. time being. So 
hey, I'm ready for football, but I do enjoy this time because I think that it's almost as fun to talk about what could happen than it is talking about what did happen. All right, let's talk about what did happen. You just mentioned two guys leaving the Bills to go to a division rival. It's always game day in Buffalo. Sal Capaccio, Matt Bove, Jordan Poyer, and Saran Neal. It's going to hurt seeing Jordan Poyer in a Bills, in a Dolphins uniform for a lot of Bills fans. Maybe even Saran Neal. It is a division rival, but Jordan is the one that's the real kick for Bills fans. But, hey, the Bills moved on. There was their decision to move on, and yeah. um, it's no, not surprising at all that Jordan and his wife, Rachel, who live down in South Florida part-time, and he trains down there. Uh, that they sign down there. That's where he plays golf and has his tournament down in South Florida. And there were rumors last year that he might've joined the dolphins, uh, but didn't wind up happening. He came back to Buffalo, obviously, but look, I mean, I think let's be honest here. We all saw that Jordan Poyer wasn't the same player last year. doesn't mean mm-hmm. he was bad. This guy's going to give you everything. He's a baller, but I think we all saw that he wasn't the true safety that he had been the previous six years of the Bills uniform. And that's why they actually had to change his role a little bit, Matt, as the season went on. And he, he thrived in that role as that third nickel safety in those situations. But there's a reason why he only got $2 million from the Miami Dolphins. I was just going to say the evidence is all in the contract. The evidence is that that's not a contract that guarantees anything. That's mm-hmm. a contract that says we think that there's potential here. We've seen you play really great football within the division. We like what you mean off the field. Come in here and try and make the 53-man roster. That is not like a, hey, starting safety next to Holland. You're definitely going to be on the field. They'll probably use Jordan Poyer like the Bills used Jordan Poyer at the end of last season and try and just get creative with him, especially for teams that they think can bully them, teams that are a little bit bigger. I don't know. I get Bills fans being mad that Jordan Poyer is going to Miami, but please remember the bills decided they did not. This is not happening. Yeah. If the bills decided they continued to want Jordan Poyer to be here. The one thing that I will say though, and this is just from like an outsider's perspective on this, it did seem that after the bills made the decision, you know, he's on Instagram live and he's talking about how he got fired. His brother's on social media talking about how, you know, things ended poorly. I think there could be some juice there. Like, I also think that part of the reason he's going to Miami isn't just the convenience of living in South Florida. It's that he wants to go up against the Bills and try and prove a point. We'll see what happens on the field. But I think that that's part of it, too. I think he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, even though there was so much success between those him and the Bills over the years. Listen, and 100% agree with that. And a lot of people have kind of compared it to when Thurman Thomas joined the Dolphins after the Bills released him. And name dropper here, Thurman, is a very good friend of mine. And I will tell you, I've had conversations with him about this over the years. And he said, like, he was pissed when the Bills got rid of him. That was a thing he wanted to do. (laughs) He wanted to go to Miami. But you know where he is now? He's living in Buffalo, not too far from me, actually. And he loves Buffalo. And, you know, time heals those wounds. But these guys are competitive, man. They put Mm -hmm. their heart and their soul and their blood and their sweat and their tears into playing for a uniform and love it so much. And Jordan Poyer has done that. No one can ever. Look what he did go driving to Kansas city with the, the lung situation and all that. No one can ever question Jordan Poyer's commitment to Buffalo. So that's got to hurt for him. I don't blame him at all for thinking that way, but in a few years, I think Jordan Poyer is also going to be very much welcoming back Buffalo and Buffalo welcoming back him. Not that he even Mm -hmm. isn't welcoming now. I mean, Rachel wrote a nice letter uh, to bills fans as well on social media and you know, but that is totally how these guys are wired and I don't blame them whatsoever. As far as Saran Neal is concerned, look, I mean, he's a, I think he's one of the better special teams players in the league. It's a, it hurts the bills, but they can replace Saran Neal. Um, you know, he's been around for quite a while now. Uh, it's a, it's an area that the bills feels very important, but he's not a guy that you're going to put on the defensive side to play a lot of snaps. If the Miami dolphins put, you know, Jordan Poyer back to play safety full time and in the same role, he had been for six years in the bills and, or, and, or put Saran Neal on defense that's not good for the Miami Dolphins. These guys have certain roles now at this point of their mm-hmm. careers. And Saran Neal is a special teams guy, and I wish him the best of luck in Miami, but that's not something the Bills can't overcome. You know how I feel about this. You know how I feel about the I special do. teams and about how they've got a lot of special players that specialize in their special teams prowess, but yep. yet somehow they are still a very average special teams team over the course of the years. I know Saran Neal is a good special teams player. 
He also got paid more money than probably a special team specialist should ultimately make. Yes. Unless someone besides, you know, like a kick, like a really good kicker or a really good punter. Everybody always talks about Justin Shorter. I don't think Justin Shorter, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Somebody can clip this and post it on social media in a year or two years, whatever it is. I don't think Justin Shorter is going to be some elite wide receiver in the NFL, but he's an athletic freak and he can yep. probably do something similar on special teams as to what Saran Neal was able to do, and they can do it for a lot cheaper. So once again, good luck to Saran Neal. But for the Bills, that was not one that left me scratching my head. I do want to ask you this question, though, because it's interesting to me. I said this when we recorded our last podcast earlier in the week. Why do we still know nothing about Micah Hyde? The longer this gets drawn out, the more interested I am in him possibly coming back. I think you could look at it two ways. The longer it goes, the more confident you might be that he's just going to retire because you haven't heard anybody's name attached to him. Uh But I did have that same thought today. Hey, wait a minute. Like they haven't really done anything here at safety. They did ring, bring back Cam Lewis. Um, We we could talk about that in a minute, but you're right. I think that could happen, but it just has never seemed like an idea. The bills are going to do now, unless they just look at the market the money's a little too much the guys go elsewhere. And they're like, you know what? And Micah says, I want to play another year. It just never felt like that was an area where they wanted to run it back again. Like they had been uh, And it was, it was an area where it could be like Jordan last year. Remember Jordan was a free agent last year. Uh-huh. And then he came back to Buffalo after there was not really much interest out there. Mike is in a different situation with the, the neck I get, but I guess I, I, I there's a, it's a non-zero chance. I'll say that. Yeah. Well, I just think that, One of the reasons when I said at the beginning, I thought they would do more safety is the position that I was very confident that they would go out and address in free agency. To me, that felt like the position that you could add in free agency because the class was so Mm -hmm. not the class, the group of free agents was so deep. And then that would kind of open the door to taking a wide receiver in the first round and then doing whatever you need to do at defensive tackle. They've somewhat addressed defensive tackle with Daquan Jones. It looks like you've got your main guys, but there's not a lot of depth there at all. So I know that they will be adding bodies at defensive tackle. But right now, as it looks, it's Taylor Rapp and Cam Lewis is your star. I don't feel confident with that at all, at all. So are there any names out there at safety who haven't signed yet, who you think, ooh, that would be a good fit for the Bills? Or are they just guys who are going to get paid too much money? Yeah, I mean, there's several guys. The, the safety market is 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 pretty deep. I mean, without looking at all the names right now, I'm, I wouldn't be exactly sure who's signed and who hasn't because I uh-huh. think there's names all over the place. But it is one of the deeper free agent classes. But guys are getting some money. Like um, uh, Jordan Whitehead just went back to the Buccaneers, got a pretty nice deal. Remember, he was with the Jets and intercepted Josh Allen three times in that opening weekend last year. But uh-huh. there's guys that are getting paid a little bit around the league. I am glad you brought up the special teams point and, you know, filling in and Saran Neal and all that because – the Bills do have a guy they brought in on Wednesday. Reportedly, they're going to sign Mac Hollins, who actually is probably going to be a special team player. Now, I think he'll be less special teams than Saran Neal, but that's pretty much got to be his primary role because, Matt, you can't tell me that Mac Hollins is going to be any sort of answer at number two wide receiver after lo- losing Gabe Davis. They have to do more than that. This is a guy who he's actually older than Stefan Diggs by three months. But he's been a serviceable player when they when he's been called upon at wide receiver. But more than anything, special teams guy, um, you know, just kind of offers you depth on your roster to be able to play in a pinch. I would think that's his role. To me, he screams the Trent Sherfield replacement from last year. A few people have suggested like the Jake Kumaro role. I think he'll play more than that, more than what Jake Kumaro played, but not that much more. More like Trent Sherfield, like I said. I used to know when Jake Kumaro came on the field that the Bills were running the ball because every time that's what it meant. Jake Kumaro. Oh, and field. this guy, he's well, a good blocker too. So yeah, Matt he's, Collins, a, he's known. Yeah. I like it. You brought up Trent Sherfield. It's the first thing that I thought of when they made the signing. I was walking the baby down by the water this morning and I was listening to the radio when I heard that they signed Matt Collins. To me, I like how Mike Catalana from Buffalo Plus put it. He said, Matt Collins has Gabe Davis body, but will play Trent Sherfield's role. And I like the way that he basically summarized it there. I think that he gives you something that you didn't necessarily have last year with a big body, a big frame, somebody who can stretch the field, but also not somebody who I think you're going to get a ton out of. Last year, Matt Collins had 18 catches. It's not a great year. He also played with the Atlanta Falcons, who were not a great team, especially offensively. The year prior, 
he had 54 catches. So to me, I think you split the difference. I think he'll probably be somebody who has, assuming he makes the team, 30 to 35 catches, probably a couple touchdowns. And that's totally fine because the Mac Collins deal does not take you away at that's all right. from using an asset on a wide – like it almost makes it more obvious that they are going to do something. <laughs> Right. They're going to do this something. Not- I just don't know when or what it is. Right. I mean, Mike Williams is out there now. People talk about that. There's still some guys. I, I just don't know. I They got to draft one, but they got to do more than that. Yeah, I agree, too, because I think that even if you're using your first round pick on a wide receiver, you're planning to you need at least another guy. And I don't think it can be another Mac Hollins level guy. Like, I think it needs to be somebody with a little bit more upside. So I don't exactly know who that is just because the market has kind of been watered down. There's a couple names out there that I really like still, but not a ton. No. And, you know, we'll see what they do at wide receiver because that's obviously um, an area that needs to be addressed, an area that I didn't think needed to be addressed and didn't think it would be the first one that they did. But Nicholas Morrow comes over from the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think this might say more about Tyrell Dodson than anything else, Matt. I, I think this is a type of signing that, we can look at Tyrell Dodson's free agency and say, okay, I, I can't see them bringing him back. Tyrell Dodson may actually get a starting role somewhere. I don't know that. I mean, he played starter last year for the bills and, and you know, through most of the season. And I thought as the season went on, he was really darn good, especially against the run, not as much against the pass. Nicholas Morrow is Tyrell Dodson. Basically this guy has played Mike. He's played. Will. he's wore the green dot and called the signals in both Philadelphia and for the Vegas Raiders. And uh, two years, I'm sorry, I'm for the Chicago Bears, excuse me, started with the Raiders. Two years ago for the Bears, this guy started 17 games and made 116 tackles. I'm like, what is going mm-hmm. on here? I didn't even realize this. But apparently, you know, if you talk to Eagles fans, they'll tell you, look, but that was still an area where they needed to upgrade because he was not very good in coverage. And yeah, he could fill in. He screams like Tyrell Dodson. That's, what I, that's exactly what he screams like. Well, he is going to make the team, but at the same time, what is he going to be? The fourth or fifth guy on the depth right. chart? Right. Where is Tyrell Dotson fit into that? He doesn't at this right. point because right now you have spent – we know Terrell Bernard and um, Matt Milano are going to be your yep. top two guys. After that, it's Dorian Williams, and after that, it's probably Balen Spector unless they think they're willing to cut loose with Balen Spector after a couple of years and Morrow eventually becomes your fourth guy. But even then, we're talking about, at best, the fourth guy. There's yeah. not an alley right. for Tyrell Dotson. I think they've kind of closed the door on I mean, unless there's nothing out there and then right. you just bring him back as one of those depth signings, maybe not even a top 51 contract for nothing and say like, hey, we know what you can do come compete but i imagine that he will get more money from somebody else i agree and look yes everything we just said is all right what you said is exactly right and it feels like tyrell dotson would be like hey look i want to go somewhere get a better opportunity i'm going to be buried on this depth chart but this might also be in response to what happened at the end of last year where the bills were so thin at linebacker they were pulling aj klein in from a vacation basically getting on a plane to have to play and they want to make sure that they're stacked there so i wouldn't rule it out and as i always remind everybody You got to bring 90 players anyway to camp and well, you don't have to, but you get up to 90. So there's always going to be more players and at positions and they're going to keep adding. So it could very well be possible, which by the way, Tyler Medikevich, I know special teams. I get it. Don't ever rule him out either because the bills love bringing Tyler Medikevich back on one year deals uh, when they can, when they can. All right. Then the other one, the bills lost. We'll, we'll get to here is Dane Jackson. Um, Listen, I, I think you agree with me. Good for Dane, right? I mean, he's going to get huh. starters money and start. The, the Bills Heck could yeah. not, nor should they, pay Dane Jackson what he got. But holy cow, good on you, Dane Jackson. Seven mil a year for a couple of years. Panthers. Levi Wallace, come on down. Yeah, I know, right? Dane Jackson yeah. is heading to the Carolina Panthers. You need a guy who you can be, you know, have as a trusty third corner, fourth corner, wherever you see Kyrie Elam. I mean, Kyrie Elam better be the third guy after what you used, what draft pick you used to go out and get him with new coaches. Hopefully he can reach his potential. But as much as I like Russell Douglas, cornerback is a sneaky need for the Bills now. It can't be something that they use like a really high draft pick sure. on. Yep. But I mean, after your two starters and one of them is older, and Christian Ben, like I really like Christian Benford, but I, once again, later round pick. I don't don't know what the trajectory of his career looks like. 
good for Dane Jackson. They, I mean, he started 28 games for the Bills over the last four years. Yeah. That's not nothing. There were times when he'd start games and you would sit there and say to yourself, man, he's hurting them. He shouldn't be starting this game. But you know what? The people behind him would have looked even worse. So now the Bills need to figure out who are those guys that are going to play in a depth role. And that's why I do think Levi Wallace is this iteration of what EJ Gaines once was or what those players who just kept coming back were for the Bills a couple of years ago. Just somebody who they know they can trust and that they could get in here for cheap because it's probably not Josh Norman anymore. It's probably not whoever else they've used. Just that one makes sense. Well, yeah. First of all, let me just go back to Dings. I think that, you know, just to talk about him a little bit and his role, you're, you're so right. I mean, he, he wasn't the greatest all the time, but I think he made some crit- He played really well when he's called on last year, he made some critical plays yeah. down the stretch that Miami game he made a couple big plays actually uh, for the That's bills great. in week 18. Right. You know, Christian Benford has had some injuries. He missed a couple playoff games even last year. Mm-hmm. We know that. So they're going to need some depth. I agree. Um, Dane Jackson to me though, and it just says a lot about him and his character and his you know ability and scrappiness when he comes in this league as a seventh round pick and initially he was waived by the bills actually uh-huh. his first year and then he resigns practice squad then he goes back up seventh round pick dane jackson and four years later he's getting a starter contract at seven mil a year to play starter for carolina i just i i just really respect that and you know he's also um, best friends of Demar Hamlin. They went to college mm-hmm. together, and for him, you know, going through that, that was a very tough time. And you know, Dane was the guy talking a lot about that and 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 that relationship. Mm-hmm. So you know, we'll always remember Dane Jackson very fondly. I agree with you about Levi Wallace, but who knows? Maybe they just don't think he's a fit anymore. He didn't play that well in Pittsburgh, so maybe they look and no. say, um, you know, that's not something we want. But yeah, for sure, Bills always love to bring somebody in that is, um, you know, they're familiar with and and they understand. A note on Kyrie Elam. Did you see he changed his jersey number? Yes, I did see that actually. Really quick, you said that he five. wasn't a he, yeah, he's number five. Yeah. He, when you just said he didn't play that great in Pittsburgh, you know who else I thought of? Mitch Trubisky, oh. who didn't play that great in Pittsburgh. <laughs> right. And yet and the Bills back. were like, "Come on back, baby!" Uh, so he's number right. five. There was one other change. Or, oh, Mitch Trubisky is wearing eleven. Right. I think last 11. time he was here, he wore ten, but ten is now Khalil Shakir. So Mitch, I'll Trubisky give you one more on number corner. eleven. I'll give you one more on corner before we um before we move like on. One, one more potential go out and sign. One, one more thought on corner. I'm a really big Jamarcus Ingram guy. Now I'm not telling okay. you that he, you're going to use him to start. I think they're high on Jamarcus Ingram, and I think they should uh-huh. be. He's long. He's athletic. He could play corner. He could play a little safety actually, which we know how much the team likes that. By the way, University of Buffalo product uh, like Cam Lewis as well. But um, I think Jamarcus Ingram has a real shot to make this 53 next year. I mean, Jamarcus Ingram has played in games, yep. right? Yeah. What is it? Probably three I or like four of them. Two, maybe three. Uh-huh. Okay. Miami and I, I, I think Miami and Baltimore last year when he had to come in in a pinch. Um, but yeah, I just I just want to throw it out there that like don't forget about these guys that have been on the roster they've developed. They've been on the practice squad, right? Jamarcus Ingram is one of them. And I was talking a lot about Jamarcus Ingram last year. I thought Jamarcus Ingram last year might even make Kyrie Elam expendable. That didn't happen. And they've been sticking uh-huh. with Elam and maybe something comes there, but we'll see. I like Jamarcus Ingram. They also have Kyron Brown available who has actually played uh, in the NFL as well. All right. How I'm about not a done with, I'm oh, not done with, I'm not done with Kyrie Elam. Okay. But I'm just, I, I don't I think really, the bills are either. No, I don't think they are either. And I don't think that what you would get for him, his value has never been lower when you're trying to talk about potentially trading him, moving him, whatever it is, he's got a contract that's manageable. He's still got a ton of talent. I'm not done. And he has made plays. He has gotten burned, but he's also made plays. So I'm not done with Kyrie Elam. And I think a new coaching staff will do a lot for him. All right. Let's talk about a couple of moves that um, haven't been made yet, but could possibly be made. How about this Eric Armstead stuff? So Eric Armstead gets released by the San Francisco 49ers. Defensive uh-huh. tackle, really good player, name in the league. And a reporter, I have to grab his name here as we're on the air, Matt, but from the athletic uh-huh. out in San Francisco, writes in a tweet, just kind of, just matter of factly, watch Buffalo as a possible team here. Well, then after uh-huh. some sleuthing from some Bills fans and some media, Apparently, Eric Armstead's wife went to the University of Buffalo, has a medical degree from there, 
And there's rumblings that she even has a practice at ECMC, which we haven't confirmed yet, but this seems like it could be some sort of tie and fit. Well, if that fit and that tie gets somebody who might be wanted elsewhere, if that's the tiebreaker, then great. It's not what I expected, but that would be the air quotes big move of the offseason because Eric Armstead did not get released because he's not a good player. He got released because he made a ton of money. And from what it sounds like, the 49ers asked him to take a pretty hefty pay cut. And he was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And then they had to basically move on. So, yeah, he's a player that's a little bit older. But I think when you're talking about a position where the Bills love to lean into a rotation, your rotation becomes that much more solid with Ed Oliver, with Daquan Jones, and with Eric Armstead. And that would pretty much take care of at least the big-time defensive tackle additions that you would make this offseason. And then after that, it could be something that you handle with guys like Jordan Phillips, if he even decides he wants to come back and play. Tim Settle, maybe, if he doesn't get any money from the open market. Eli Anku, somebody who's been in this building before, who's going to be very affordable. Like Those can be your fourth, fifth, and sixth guys at defensive tackle if you have three really legit dudes up top with Armstead, with Oliver, and with Daquan Jones. But at the same time, it's just the one reporter, so it could turn out to be, right? Like Calvin His name, by the way, is Matt Barrows, if anybody wants to know. Matt Barrows covers the 49ers for the Athletic. So he's got, I mean... I just, yeah, yeah, it's it, it definitely caught my attention. It caught a lot of people's attention because Eric Armstead is a big name in this league and he's a really good player. But I also just remember for the last two days seeing a bunch of posts about how it was down to the Jags and the Patriots for Calvin mm. Ridley. And then he went inside with the Titans. And <laughs> yes, now, he did. You know, that happens all the time with free agency. Um, Do you know, without looking it up, do you know Eric Armstead's measurements? Uh, isn't he like six, seven? He's 6'7", 290. Now, for a comparison, Matt, Greg Rousseau is 6'6", 266. Oh, my God. <laughs> Greg Rousseau is huge. That, He's that's a, right. 6'7". That might be is Spencer Brown 6'7". I'm going to look Ooh, it up right now. Yeah, I'm good gonna, question. You, I think he is. He No, he might. I'm, I'm going to say 6'6", six, six, Spencer Brown. What do you think? 6'8". Wow. Spencer, Spencer Brown, Brown is 6'8". <laughs> Spencer Brown is. I, I'll, I'll tell you from. I'm. I always argue with Joe Biscalia as somebody who is, I, I say I'm six foot. He says I'm five eleven and a half. <laughs> I think I'm six foot regardless standing next to Spencer Brown yes. makes you feel really small. Oh my God. Josh, Josh is big, but Josh doesn't has never felt to me. Like I'm looking up at him. Yeah. I am looking up at two guys in that locker room, Greg Russo and Spencer Brown. Every time I'm just like, how am I the same? species as these guys these this is insane it is you're right um after the the bills when they win games i go on the field and i do an on-field interview with players and i'm always looking up at them the only guy i never had to look up at was deontay hardy we were actually looking at eye level <laughs> deontay hardy of course released now but i'm always looking up at players i'm i say i'm five nine that's what i say i don't know that's with what the, you say with the bald it might be a shade under that but i'm five nine yeah I think, I, got my, a, I think my I, license says I'm 5'10", actually, but I say I'm 5'9". I got a new pair of running shoes last summer. Uh, Hoka's is the brand. Okay. And they legitimately add like an inch and a half. At oh. training camp last year, I wore them because they were very comfortable. And it was great because for like a month, I felt like I was 6'2". And then just back to reality, I was just back down to being my height. Give me a couple names of players at any position who you want the Bills to add because admittedly, Sal, I'm bored. I need things to happen. I'm bored. Well, I mean, look, if you're going to, if you're going to dream big about Eric Armstead, then how about I go back to my guy, DJ reader. Has he signed anywhere yet? No, but apparently he's in talks with Detroit or on there a flight go. to Detroit yeah. to go there have a go. conversation there. Okay. So that's uh, once Jeremy you get on Chin. The flight, I don't know. Can we go? So I, well, I'm he, not, I no, don't Jeremy have to Chin signed. Jeremy Where'd, oh, yeah, signed. Where'd he go? Uh, the commanders, I think for like I, four I and a half million dollars. Okay. Now I'll say this. Uh, our guy, Joe Marino, who does a Lockdown Bills podcast, had your name, the guy, had the guy you did, Ezekiel Elliott. I am not down with Ezekiel Elliott, but he actually said that he thought he would be a fit. I I do not. I don't. Yeah, but I, Zeke Elliott's going to cost like $2 million. And Zeke what's he going to do? Gonna cost, I, what did Latavius Murray do? Last run year? into it. Exactly. Give me somebody who's not going to do that. 
No, I'm saying he's going to do it much better than that. Nah, he's five years younger than Latavius Murray. So was Leonard Fournette. Sure. Couldn't, even, I, couldn't even get on the field. You, know, you, I I mean, I still to this day, I'll die on this hill if I have to, think that Leonard Fournette could have done exactly what Latavius Murray did in the second half of the season. Not yeah, the probably right. first half of the first half of the season, Latavius Murray actually was pretty good. I, I don't know. I just bring back Ty Johnson, but 100%. I'm just almost at the point of I accepted change. I accepted that there was going to be a lot of turnover on the roster. And to this point, it has just been bringing back guys. And that's not a bad thing to an extent, but you also got to get some new faces. You got to get some new talent in here. Just bringing back Daquan Jones and AJ Epinesa. Those are smart, savvy moves, but that's not enough. Go find well, guys who can try and put you over the edge, not just get you closer to what you once were. Well, you put me on the spot. Now I look like an idiot because I didn't know those guys uh, even signed just to try and think of some names. Do you have a couple? Oh, no, you just said you just said Jeremy Chin. That's not a crazy one at all. Uh, I know, but, but you he... said he signed. Where did Jeremy Chin sign? Uh, Washington, I believe. Okay, I didn't realize. Oh, Washington. Yeah, it they was... signed Bobby Wagner, too, by the way. Yeah, Washington. It, Jeremy Chin's contract, I think, was like one year for four and a half million dollars. Well, so, I don't think the safety market's going to be too too expensive once it starts to settle here. The pie in the sky idea is Justin Simmons because it's one of those things where the longer he stays on the market, the more I wonder what is he looking for, and would the Bills actually be potential there? Quandre Diggs is also still available. Yep. Once again, another guy who's older, so I don't exactly know if that's what the Bills want. You would think at this point they probably are trying to get younger at wide receiver. I still like Curtis Samuel, which is a Me player too. that you've talked about several times. He's still out there. But based off of some of the other guys that have gotten paid, I don't know if that's even realistic. A depth guy, I like LaVisca Chanel. I think mm -hmm. that he's a really fun player, and I think that he's got a skill set that would help the Bills. The thing that worries me about that, though, is I think that would mean they draft a guy and then they feel like they're done. I mean, mm -hmm. Hollywood Brown is still out there. That one to me is weird because I like Hollywood Brown, but I also think if you sign Hollywood Brown, then you're probably not drafting one in the first round. And I think that they very much need to be in that market. I think that they need to finally do it because these wide receiver classes are getting better and these players are really good and you need to retool your roster because who knows how much longer you've got Stefan Diggs is legit number one. So I, I and, Go I don't is, is KJ Brown. I don't know if he's been. I'm, I'm sorry. KJ Osborne. Is KJ, he signed? K, no, KJ Osborne has not signed yet. At least not to what I've I seen. That's it, yeah. Played play so by much, the way, before he transferred. So to much, so much UB. So much UB. Cam Lewis, Jamarcus Ingram, potentially KJ Osborne. A lot of UB. Um, any other wide receivers out there that I'm. Well, let's talk about. Let, be, be, let me, let me shift it a little bit about wide receiver. What did you think about Calvin Ridley getting that kind of money and leaving Jacksonville? Calvin Ridley gets, I'm um, sorry, $92 million, um, 23 a year. He leaves Jacksonville to go to Tennessee. And I mean, that's just wild to me. I mean, a division rival. I mean, he went for the money. Good for him. That's fine. Never begrudge anybody that, but I don't think Tennessee is going to be that great anyway. Now, Will Levis might be an okay quarterback. He's going to help him there. But man, he's leaving a he's leaving a really good offense, and that leaves Gabe Davis as kind of like their top guy right now. Yeah, I think unless you count DJ yeah. Chark, I guess is their top top guy. And what's well, he doing? Christian wouldn't Christian Kirk? That's be? what I meant, Christian Kirk. Yeah, unless you, I always I always confuse DJ Chark and Christian Kirk always for some reason. I think they have well, they once had DJ Chark, so it's not yeah. that far off. They have their top three would be Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, and Zay Zay Jones. Jones? I believe would be there. Now you have Evan Ingram three. and you have Travis Etienne. That's great. But what a big blow to the Jaguars to lose Ridley to a division rival. I'll ask you this. Who's got a better skill position, a group of skill position players, the Jags or the Bills? I, I don't I don't know if it's as obvious uh, as now without Ridley, I'd say the Bills. But oh maybe not. So. Maybe not. I mean, because the Bills are very it's tough at wide receiver right now. The, the funny thing about this is Gabe Davis might be the swing vote here. Put him on the Bills, it's the Bills. Put him on the Jags, the Jags. Take him away from one of the other teams, right? I would say it's the Bills just because Dalton Kincaid is really good. I mean, let's say, good. J let's say J not Dalton Kincaid, though. Right. Let's say James Cook and ETN are a wash, and Stefan Diggs is still the best player of the bunch. Yeah, so I would say the Bills, right. but it's not a home run. And that, once again, speaks to the point of they need to add people. 
Yep. Right now, Khalil Shakir is their number two wide receiver, and Mac Collins is their number three. They need to add at least okay. two more guys that fill into that number two and number three spot. Okay, so how does the Mike Williams idea hit you? Love it. And I, I, I it's crazy. I don't even really love the player that much, but I love the idea of it. I love okay. the idea of a guy who is produced in this league, who's big, who is probably going to take a significant pay cut from what he was going to make in LA. The question is just, what is it? Right? Like, you, you know what team I think is going to sign Mike Williams? You might have actually made this point on the radio, and I love it. Kansas City it. Chiefs. Yes, I think I heard you say it on the radio, I and I was like, oh my gosh, I think that they could do that. Mm -hmm. I think them, and I also think this is not a sexy destination, but I think after missing out on Kelvin Ridley, the Patriots might throw a ton of money at Mike Williams because they can and because they're trying to get somebody who they think could be a guy. How about the Patriots trying to maybe trade for T. Higgins? You know, that would be an interesting move. I think it'd be a smart move for the Patriots because his going rate is what? A late first or an early second round pick? Probably. Yep. And I think they still have their second round pick as normal. So you mm -hmm. could offer basically Cincinnati where they drafted T. Higgins. I know, right? Four yeah. years ago, which was, I think, the first pick in the second round. That's right. So as a T. Higgins dynasty fantasy football owner, I want him nowhere near the New England Patriots. Um, but from the Patriots standpoint, if you're going to draft a quarterback, you, you probably need to give them something better than who is their number one wide receiver right now? Is it Kendrick Bourne? Uh, yeah, I would think so if he's healthy, I guess. <laughs> I think they got they got rid of Devontae Parker, I believe. So yeah. There's something going on with Devontae Parker, I saw. I think they might even... They weren't, were they bringing them back or they're getting rid of them or something? I don't even remember. Let me see if I can find that because there was some Devontae Parker news going on yesterday and then I can't even remember what it was. Uh, you know, Eagles, had, Eagles, we, Eagles signed Devontae Parker. Okay. We've had, I did see that. That's a smart move for them. We've had a knack for finishing these podcasts and then something happens <laughs> right away. Yeah. Somebody actually commented okay. on it the last time. Can we say like, hey, Justin Jefferson makes a lot of sense and then all Ooh, of a sudden we stop I would the podcast and the. That, that that's cost? the you want you want to do pie in the sky okay what Brandon would, Bean says I'm going cost? back to Minnesota and calling them and making a deal just like it did for uh, Stefan Diggs it would probably cost two first rounders that's what it would cost but the problem is you're giving up two first and you you have to pay him basically the highest paid wide receiver maybe in history Tyreek Hill has the highest paid is the highest paid wide receiver in history his contract now granted there's a lot of different numbers and to massage this but. Four mm -hmm. years, 120 for Tyreek Hill. You're going to make probably have to go over that. And you can't do that. The Bills, I don't think there's any way they could do that. Yeah, it's tough because I even think the same thing about them moving up in the first round. Like, let's say they love one of the consensus top three guys. Even if they slip a little bit to get to the first half of the first round, probably costs you two ones and something else. It might cost you two ones and a two because you're sitting at 28 and I just think that's too rich for the bills blood. I don't, I don't know what they do. I could see them making a mini jump. Like let's say Brian Thomas is getting there in like the late teens or the early twenties. And you're like, we need this guy. Mm -hmm. Maybe they use a fourth or a fifth or both of them to move up and get them because they have so many draft picks, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm wondering what's going to happen when we stop recording this because we're now two for two this week on this happening. So let's try and go three for three. Well, let's see if that happens. Uh, a couple other um, things that we can get to next time. Rules changes. They've been submitted. That'll happen at the owners meeting. So we'll talk a little bit about maybe what those possibilities are. Um, and what else is going on? Um, oh, yeah, because there was something else I want to bring up. It was the extension of I don't think we touched on too much you know, Epinesa or Cam Lewis, but obviously they're coming back to the bills and those are nice. And I would say, you know, you know how much I love Cam Lewis. I think Cam Lewis is a really nice player. He's a good guy to have, you know, in Buffalo and mm -hmm. he could even compete for a starting job. And I agree with you. If he is your starter, you know, you have questions about that, but AJ Epinesa low key, like I think really important signing for the bills. I was a little surprised at the money he got, but if you look at it in totality, you know, if you think, he, you know, five years, 50 year player, ascending player, another team may have wanted them for about the same or a little bit more. So you, you can live with a little five plus million basically per year.
Yeah, for sure. I think that once the initial number came out, it's kind of what we thought. You remember yep. we talked about the spot track market value being just under six million dollars and saying, okay, that makes sense. And then the initial numbers come out and it was a little bit more than that. And you said, okay, well, he probably got interest. And then you actually saw the numbers and it was a little bit less than that. And it seemed like, okay, this is a good deal for the Bills. I like it because of the questions with Von Miller. I think that AJ Epinesa is a solid player. And I think that with not knowing what Von Miller is going to be next year, you need at least a solid guy as your number three. It's weird, though, because in the last week, the Bills, the needs that they have now added to their roster have started to build a little bit. Like, you could make a case that they need to go add another pass rusher. They need to add another defensive tackle. They need to add a safety. They need to add a corner. They need to add wide receivers. They've got the picks to do it, but this team doesn't have the greatest track record with draft picks, so I'm not super confident that they can knock out 50% of those, if not even less than that. Well, I'm scan scanning right now, and there's nothing. We we waited an extra couple minutes here by that talk. There's nothing that's come over in the next couple minutes. So we'll see if uh, it happens after we get out of here. You know what we did today? You know what I did today? Our what? daughter turns one. Oh, happy on, birthday. She, t she turns one when we're recording this the next day on March 14th. Today, the owners' meetings are in Orlando. In two weeks, you'll be there for work. I'll be there for work for the day. And then the family's going to come down to Orlando and then we're going to go to Disney World for a couple Love of days. It. So Love we're going to bring a one, we're going to bring a one year old to Disney World. I have no idea how that's going to go, but we're going to give it a shot. I love it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And yeah, we're going to talk more about what's going to happen down there. But by the time we do record next, I'm sure we'll have more Bills news. All right. You can find us always on video on the South Sports YouTube page if you're listening and didn't know that. And if you're watching and didn't know, you can always take us with your audio as well. Either you'd hear how you're doing it or wherever you pod. It's always game day in Buffalo. For Matt, I'm Sal. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks a lot to our producer, Mike Robbier.